All right, high rollers, we haven't had this guy on in a while, but he is back, and we have a lot to catch up on. The World Match Play, where it was Dancing Dimitri on debut. The BDO, where it's been Dire Straits. How about the Worldwide Coronavirus Pandemic, where it's been Lockdown City. Plus, today, the PDC announcing a mini-series for women, and oh yes, his departure from Twitter. He is not banned by us, though. The Rocky of Darts, Aki Balboa is with us. Chris, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for joining us. Not a problem at all. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about your Twitter experience. Banned a few times, and now it seems for good. You're over there on Parlor. Uh, let's hear it from the horse's mouth. What happened? What happened to you? Well, this is my third, third account, really. And what happened was um, the one day that asked me for my phone number, um, Twitter did. So I gave it to them, didn't think anything of it. And then six hours later, I was back. So obviously, they cross referenced my phone number with um, another account and thought, oh, we can't be on again. So they banned it. So that was the end of it, really. I didn't do anything be on that account, but obviously, because. Twitter like to put put down on people who've been banned before. They don't want them signing up again. So um, yeah, so uh, I, I was I was done, and uh, that's it. That was the end of it. So um, I've got uh, when I do sign up, and I will sign up, but not yet. I will be signing from another phone. <laughs> <laughs> another phone. Now there has been yeah. some speculation that you are in fact on Twitter right now. There's some keyboard sleuths out there. Maybe you're using a whole different handle. Any truth to those rumors? There is no truth whatsoever. I've heard about this, that some two people think I'm two different individuals, but um, it's not true. If I do come back, it will be Aki Balboa. No one else, nothing else. Aki Balboa only. By the way, I love the handle. One of the best on Twitter or on Parlor now. Tell me okay. about Parlor. I don't actually use a cell phone, so I can't get on there. Can't do it for my MacBook Air. What's the site like? It's kind of like Twitter, correct? Parler is, is like a, a more right-wing Twitter, in, in, in fact. And it's still, it's still finding its feet with a lot of things. It's still a bit ugly in, in the interface. A few people on it now, but it, it, it's finding its feet. It might it may get its legs during the US elections when, when that comes into play in November. But um, at the moment, I only use it like once or twice a day. So there's no real, real things apart from politics on it really at the moment. So if anybody's interested in that, then, then it's not for them at the, mo at the moment anyway. It's still developing, so to speak. Well, I know you told me on Facebook once in a private message that it's your job to bring more darts fans over to Parlor. Yeah, it's, it's not going to work because the interface and infrastructure of it at the moment isn't that, that user-friendly for it. So at the moment, it, it, it's, it's a non-start. It was something that I wanted to do, but I mean, it's a non-star. Major news today from the PDC. They have launched a women's series with four events over two days in October. You talk about an October surprise. This is somewhat unexpected, but it's so good. It is good, and it was, it was coming for a long time because the, the PDC are interested in the women, especially the elite women, and um, they were always going to offer, offer something to them. I think having four events is better than having a one-day thing to qualify for the World Championships, even though the better players always get through. I just think it gives everybody a chance to actually play for four days. Well, two or three days, I think it is. Grand Slam Place is, is interesting as well because criteria will be changed for that, but I don't know how that will be changed, but that's interesting to see what they do. You see, But for women... For women, it's really good, but I'm interested to see how many players will be um, taking part because usually in the BDO, WDF, what you want to call it, weekend, there's uh, about 90 to 100 women. You know, you get the top, top players plus the local local ladies around the area. So I'll be interested to see if it's around about them same numbers. It was nice to see Lisa Ashton on the uh, the promo today from the PDC. Fallon Sherrick as well. Of course, Fallon got a lot of attention for her run at the World Championships. But Lisa Ashton is a four-time World Champion, so it's going to be interesting. And you know me, I love watching darts. I hope this will be streamed. It will be good for them. But um, don't expect anybody coming through on the blind side like someone we've not heard of. The big cameras in the ladies' darts will dominate it. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, you'll get the same results, really. So it's not going to be as wide open as people may think. 
did give me the same eight or twelve ladies, you know, fifteen out of sixteen in the world championship would enter plus balance. So it'd be good. It'd be highly competitive, but uh, uh, nobody from the blind side will challenge. Well, I'm opinion. hoping they show it on the stream. They got to, right? This will be entertaining to watch and very intense. And by the way, you mentioned the Grand Slam the day before October sixteenth. There is one spot in the Grand Slam up for grabs. How intense! Yeah. This is going to be an intense weekend. It is definitely because um, they're going to be very competitive. Because at the moment, with the pandemic and with the BDO being whatever it's doing, and um, and the WDS trying to find its feet, this is, this is going to be highly competitive. But uh, it's, it's probably going to be their one shot on TV time. So it's going to it's going to be doggy dog, so to speak. That's why the big players will, 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 will shine through because nobody, nobody from the outside will, will get through because I, I can't see any, anybody really past eight. I've got eight ladies in, in, in my mind who, who will be the top eight. So I think I will, I'll be pretty close in the rankings at the end of it. Now, in a recent Darts Web uh, featured article, this is about a year ago, maybe even longer, two years perhaps, yeah. I predicted three things, that there would be a small PDC women's tour, decent prize pools, that Adrian Lewis would reach a world final within five years. I think I've got four years left on that. And that High Roller <laughs> Radio would continue producing solid darts content. If I do say so myself, two out of three ain't bad. Come on, Jackpot. Yep. Yeah, two out of three ain't bad, but I don't think Jackpot will be anywhere near a world championship final anytime soon. I don't see enough in his game to, um, to really challenge the big boys anymore. He's a, he's a mix harder now. And... Um, you know, he'll get to quarters or last sixteens of, every, of everything, but I didn't see enough of, of, of him now to, to really challenge. And it's a shame because he's got that talent. But what do you make of his weight loss? I mean, he seems to have put some effort in during this lockdown. Had a decent run at the match play. You just don't think it's there in the end. I don't. I just don't think he's got the. Um, he's, he's, he's done well, but uh, but we're talking about Adrian Lewis gets quarterfinals, and we think he's done a decent job. No, not really, because ten years ago, if he got to the quarterfinals, that's a dismal failure. He, he's he's not quite there anymore. I don't. Think. And I might eat my words, and you know, I bet my words once before, a couple of times before, even. I just don't think he'll be there anymore. I think it's the end of Adrian Lewis as, as an age of forty does. Well, I'll tell you what, I hope you're wrong. I would love to see him in the final, perhaps even win it. I think it would be so dramatic. It's sad what's happened to him over the years because his game has declined, you know? Yeah, it is. It's just his action and, and his desire as well. He ain't got that, that 100% desire that he should have had when he was at the top. And then Van Gerwen just went past him and he just, liked, he just like, didn't have the heart to try and challenge him. And um, that, that just sums him up, really, and he, he, he will never recover from that. And mm. if we're going to talk about to finals, semi-finals, well, do, you know, well done, Adrian Lewis, that's really good. He doesn't sit with, with me well because he really should be challenging for the maids of honours with his talent and his ability, but he can do that. Well, this is why we love the Rocky of darts. He pulls no punches. The world match play has come and gone. No fans, no Winter Gardens. But I think it was another fantastic event. You wrote about it in a recent blog post. Price, Cross, MVG, all losing early. Ian White as well. Good run for Duzza. Major semifinal, another one. Has to be a tad disappointed, though. Had a real chance. Ricky Evans got some abuse on social media. Gary Anderson gets mm. to the final. And Dimitri Vandenberg wins it on debut. What do you think of the match play as a whole? What, what did you take away from it? I take away that a lot of the players didn't handle the fact there was no crowds to feed off, like Gervin Price, for example. I like, uh, like the fact that there was a few upsets. I thought that Ian White would do better, but losing to Joe Cullen just shows that he hasn't got it at, on TV level. It does that very solid. Probably should have lost to Vincent Van der Voort, but very solid, another semi-final. On, on Sky, Dimitri was, was excellent, but Dimitri has great talent, great composure, good action. He's won a major before, I thought he would, to be fair. So, fair play to him. Nice lad as well. You know, I can't, I can't be good, you know, he does some good dancing as well. So, you know, Dimitri has been, has been brilliant and um, hats off to him. Well, you know, people talk about his dancing. I, I thought he gave it some more 
during this match play really tried to ham it up a bit because there was no fans there. And not only that, yeah. I mean, this guy came out smiling. He seemed to have a zen attitude when he departed the stage. He had his hands behind his back, seemed very focused. And you're right, 26 yeah. years old, very composed. I think this is going to give him a major confidence boost. He's a real terror now on the PDC Pro Tour. He is, and uh, we always thought he would he would break through eventually. Probably just not yet, but in the next three or four years, he spent a lot of time with with um, Peter Wright during lockdown. He stayed at the right, so he might have got that extra bit of, from practice with him every day, for example. So yeah, you know, I reckon he'll be in the top eight, or ten for a number of years to come. He's got the game. He's got the temperament. He's got the desire. He's got um, he's got the coolness and. Um, and, you know, he's still, he's still very young, so fair play to him. A couple of things you said there. One, Gerwin Price suffered because of no fans. You think he's a guy that really needs the spotlight, the spectators, the action, if you will. And Ian White, you say he just doesn't have it. Yeah, with Gerwin Price, I think he tries to feed up the crowd, whether it's a negative or positive way. I think he races his game sometimes when the crowd isn't on his back, but sometimes he needs the crowd on his back, but he needs the crowd there. As for him, well, he, um, he just does have it at non-TV level. Okay, he got the semis of the Players' Championship, but I just think you've got to be beating people like Joe Cullen. Yeah, Joe Cullen's a decent player, but you've got to be beating Joe Cullen if you want to um, if you want to win things and if you want to convert that um, floor ability, that, that, that floor consistency onto a TV level and he doesn't do it and he doesn't do it and uh, I don't know if it's temperament I don't know if it's just because he hasn't really got the ability and everybody's got that extra yard I, I don't know and um, he's, he's he's what he's 51 now 52 I can't can't see it changing anytime soon and I think he'll slip out the top 16 in the next 12 to 18 even top 32 now, I've seen it happen to Kyle Anderson. It's recently happened to Devin Peterson after his segment uh, on the Black Lives Matter and racism in sports. It's happened to other players like uh, Bully Boy. And recently it happened to Ricky Evans after losing to Daryl Gurney at the match play. It's happened to Gurney himself. This abuse on social media, it's happening more frequently is my point. What's your take on that? Well, because... All these players, I'll, I'll just take darts for example, all these players have um, social media accounts and they, uh, they have like private messaging or they're very open to, to, to um, with the fans of whatever they wanted to do. So people, people who even bet £10 on, on them um, to win a game think it's all right for them to, to, to vent their frustration of over losing 20 quid and it's not fair because don't you, these blokes don't want to lose a, a darts game and at the same time they lose a hell of a lot more money and you know a lot more prestige with um, with rankings and so forth than, than, than some idiot with a little bet so it's, it's just not I mean um, I think um, even Fallon show up some abuse from somebody uh, uh, because she lost that modus start online thing and I think uh, do people really are people just really sad so if I lose a bet if a darts player loses the game, I'll, I'll go off for, for God's sake. Carry on with your life. Unless you're, not, unless you're not expecting you to do life settings, which is stupid anyway. Um, you just carry on with your life. You know, these things happen. Just get out of it and just leave them alone because they lose a lot more money. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, one thing I want to talk about with respect to the match play the, the comms booth, you know, I was very happy to see John Part featured so heavily. There was no Wayne Martle there. I'm a big fan of him as well. Devin Peterson, Webby, Laura Turner, and of course John Part, they stepped in. I thought they were great. What did you think? Well, John Part's excellent, excellent commentator, and he really, he really needs to be there. Martle was missed, but I think Hart stepped up to the plate pretty well. Uh, there's, there's a few commentators I'm, I'm not a fan of, especially on the side. I mean, Nigel Pearson, I'm not really a fan of. I just think he reads the game well. I think he just is too reactionary. He's too, um, oh my God, look, two 100 in the first two legs. He's, he's really on fire now. It, it's just he doesn't really read the game of darts well. And neither does Stuart Pike and um, but Rob's good to a lesser degree. Devin Peterson, I don't think he's based on comms. Laura Turner, I think he's he's good. She's one of the best, uh, one of the best ones. So it's a bit of a mix. Of it. I think ITV coverage is better. 
the commentators with Mason, with uh, Warren Little and so forth. But um, Sky, he's got that part of model, really, as your, as your focal point, and Mark Webster. Now, in a recent blog post, you suggested the BDO should fold and officially call yep. it a night. You also wrote that every press release from Des Jacklin is laced with poor English, Teflonism, and a good wedge of narcissistic tendencies. Can you talk about what's happened with the BDO and where it is right now? Uh, the BDO, it should be put to bed. And, and it should be part of the history books of the great era when darts was great and when they tried to try to get rid of the BD simp and etc. It should be put to the bed now. When Wayne and Warren um, hit that winning double, that should have been the end of the video. Des Jacklin has destroyed the video and he's just, he's, it was getting destroyed to a point before, but he has destroyed the video. And every time he puts a press release, it's just embarrassing because one of the poor English, yeah. We all make spelling mistakes, we all make things. He's a chairman of an organisation and he makes just, um, ridiculous spelling mistakes, ridiculous grammar, and also he, he tries to blame everybody else but himself. That, that's his that's really Teflonism. He's also narcissistic because one of his press releases, he refers to himself as a third person. And sorry, you don't want a chairman like that he, who's, who's part of a struggling organisation, which everybody in darts laughs at. It's just, it's just completely embarrassing, but I don't think he sees it, and, and that's, that's the big worry. And he's got, he's still got following, which I've never understood. But you know, it should fold, and and he should be kicked into the grass. And I say that as everybody knows how how I was with the video, how how big a fan I was, and how I went to the event, even though many, not many other people did, and and so forth. So yeah, it should be finished. So let me get this straight. You're not a fan of the third person news release. <laughs> not at all. It's absolutely garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you just it's just so ridiculous. I just can't believe how he's the chairman still and oh. when you look at it, you just I just laugh. Every press release he brings out, I just laugh at it and just think, you know what? What the hell? It's <laughs> What the hell? You can hear it in your voice, <laughs> my man. Now, in that blog post, you think that the Tri-Nations, the international game, and the UKDA or the amateur and county game, you think they should join forces? Yeah, because what happens is now um, is there's the, the United, United Kingdom Darts Association, which was formed by people who fairly involved in the media, but don't the baggage, so to speak. And they've, they've, they've come up with a decent business town, which is not a good station. You look at it and you think, the amateur game, and for the amateur game, it looks pretty really good. And, and a lot of the counties are joining that. The Tri Nations are coming up with something similar. Tri Nations is, is England, Wales, and uh, Scotland. And they're run by people who, I mean, Williams is involved, Wayne Williams is involved, Tommy Thompson. And um, they, they've got a little bit of baggage. So, I think they should look after the internationals and UKD should look after everything else. And I think that should come under the aspects of um, the WDF. That would be a good, solid structure for the act again. At Aki Balboa 1 on Parlor, banned by Twitter. He can trade jabs with anyone, folks. The Rocky of Darts. Chris, thanks so much, my man. No problem. Thank you very much for having me.